Hello folks, in the previous video I spoke to you about the difference between a storyboard and a wireframe. In this video here I'd like to explain the difference between a low fidelity wireframe and a high fidelity wireframe. Uh, now in the past we did a video about high versus low fidelity prototype and I'll be sure to link it here somewhere here uh, for you to be able to go and have a look at that one as well. Essentially it's the same principles between whether it's a wireframe or a prototype uh, and what the pros and cons are between low versus high fidelity. Uh, but I'll go through this uh, now for you. Uh, specifically for wireframes, I wanted to give you a visual example as well on what, how different do they look between uh, a high fidelity and a low fidelity, at least how we see it here in Relab and how we use it for our projects and our clients. Uh, so let's get into my iPad and I'll show that to you. All right, so we've got low fi and high fi wireframes, low fidelity and high fidelity. So let's talk about low fidelity first. So low fidelity wireframes are faster to produce. They're faster to produce. That also means that you get to produce more variations in shorter period of time. In shorter period of time. Right, because uh, because it's faster produced, then you just have a lot more time within a day. Uh, if you were to, you know produce lo-fi wireframes within a day, you might be able to produce three or four of them. Uh, but if you were to produce a high fidelity one, it just takes a little, a little bit more time to produce one because you put a lot more detail in it. Um, and because of that, high fidelity wireframes are, you know, it takes more time to produce. Uh, and because of that, there's not much room, not much room for variations. Uh, and the other thing as well that's quite uh, different between the two is that uh, with low-fi wireframes, there's less context because you're not trying to explain every single detail clearly. Uh, you're just trying to get to the top level, right? Not too much uh, in, in the details side of things. So because there's less context, uh, it does not produce or does not provide, provide uh, the best clarity for people who are viewing it, whether it's a tester or a stakeholder or your manager, whoever it is, whoever is viewing it and not designing it, does not provide um, uh, the best clarity. Whereas on the other hand, high fidelity wireframes are, there's more context in there. So more context and it provides more detail. more detail and clarity. So if we look at this, um, we can see that, you know, um, low-fi wireframes, faster produce, fast, faster to produce, more variations in shorter period of time, that's a plus over there. So that wins. Um, and whereas in high-fi wireframes, it takes more time to produce, less variations, there's negative in this one. Uh, but there's less context in lo-fi wireframes. Uh, it does not provide the best clarity. Oh, missing some, some text in there. That's fine. It does not provide the best clarity. So that's a minus here, but it's a plus over here because it gives more context and provides more detail and clarity to whoever's, view, whoever's testing or viewing it. Now, and because of that fact, uh, I could summarize that now, if I was just to summarize this quickly, then low fidelity wireframes are best to use for things like uh, when you're in an ideation process. It's also great to use when you're exploring top level requirements. So when you're defining top level requirements, that's also good because you're not trying to overthink here uh, requirements. And that's also 
uh, low fidelity warframes are also good when you're in the exploration stage. So, exploration. Uh, if we talk about high fidelity, high fidelity warframes, um, it's good when you are doing uh, market or user validation because you wanted to give them clarity uh, for them to be able to judge and give them your um, honest feed, uh, sorry, give you their honest feedback. So market or user validation. Uh, the other thing is uh, high fidelity warframes is also good for a pitch. So when someone's doing a pitch, whether it's to an investor or whoever it is, high fidelity warframes is great because it gives them more clarity and context. Without the, those type of clarity, it's very hard for investors to be able to judge whether it's whether or not they like this idea or not. Uh, and because of that, high, high fidelity warframes is great for getting buy-in. So getting buy-ins. If you wanted to go and sell your idea, then you gotta go high fidelity rather than low fidelity. Again, it just gives a lot more context and clarity, which is the win for the high fidelity wireframe here. Uh, but obviously it takes a lot more effort, time to produce. Hopefully that's clear for you. Now I'm gonna jump into the computer here and just show you a side-by-side -side comparison between high fidelity and low fidelity wireframes. Let's get onto it. Okay, so now here we've got low fidelity wireframe, which is the one on the left hand side and high fidelity on the right hand side. The main difference as you can see is that there's just less context. So if we take a look at this um, section here, which is the fixtures, uh, you just have two uh, circles, two shapes. It says team name number one, team name two, uh, and so on and so forth. Whereas in high fidelity, you're giving it a lot more context. As a matter of fact, you put a bit more detail in it, which is the location. You give the teams uh, their names as well. You put in dates. Uh, so there's just more details in this, right? Uh, similar to the events bit, uh, upcoming events, online training session, uh, that does not have the date in there. Whereas this one has that. Um, and as you can see in the blog section as well, uh, there's no, there are no titles, but it's got the, the blocks in there. So as a person viewing it or as a user viewing it, I get an idea that those are blogs. But when I view the high fidelity one, it gives me an idea of what type of topics is this application trying to give me. Uh, whereas the other one is just like a general understanding. Okay, like there will be articles, but I don't know exactly what. Uh, let's just move on to some of the other pages. So if I just go to, you know, a match or a fixture page and I'll just go to this one as well uh, so if you if we can compare this um, it just says in the tab here it just says label and label whereas in the high fidelity one it gives you an idea that this labels are you know one is upcoming fixtures and the other one is past fixtures um, with the fixture cards as well uh, as you can see there's just less detail in the lo-fi and there's more in the hi-fi. So I'm sure you get, uh, I'm sure you get the main difference here. So, um, you know, like for us to produce something like this, uh, which is the lo-fi version, it won't take as much time because there's just less overthinking. Uh, but in the high fidelity one, there's, there's more thinking, there's more thought put into it, there's more discussions. Uh, and so when we're storyboarding for something like this, it will take a lot more time as opposed to doing this, uh, which, you know, won't take as much effort to do. Uh, so those are the main difference, guys, and hopefully that's clear to you. If you have any questions, please do um, write a comment and I'll be happy to answer. Uh, and if you've done this differently as well, if you've done these, these type of wireframes differently, you go, oh, Alvin, I thought, you know, uh, low fidelity is like this or whatever, uh, please drop your comment. I'm very open to feedback and to see what others are doing as well and how you've done it in your own projects, uh, which is which is great for us to learn as well. All right, guys, uh, if you haven't subscribed to this channel and if you enjoy the content that we produce, I really appreciate it. If you can subscribe, share it and um, see who else will benefit from these type of content. 
uh, I do get comments from recruiters who are who's finding this channel really great. Uh, that, that gives them an idea of what you know product designers are and so on and so forth. Uh, but also from lecturers and people who are just learning UX and UI and product design. So um, yeah, please do share it to those who would find it beneficial. All right, guys, have a good one, and I'll see you in the next one.